the guy doubted me, no way that's gonna fit. I made it fit. No problem, even safe. These fun pieces right here are a gantry crane, but of course it's not gonna work stock. We have to modify it. To make it work for me, we gotta make it wider. We gotta make so water doesn't fill up that tube and just rust it out, because it's gonna live outdoors. And I'm sure there's two or three other things I'm gonna modify as well to make it work for me. Keep watching. So I pulled one of the tubes all the way out because I was curious of how long it was. And it's actually the same length as the tube inside there. So that's good. I'm just going to put some grease, some marine grease, just on, because it just rubs on that very end. And then just on the top little braces as well. So because of the top of that is open, and this is gonna live outside, rainwater is just gonna fill up the inside. So we're gonna to have to drill a hole at the bottom just so if any rainwater gets in, it just drains out and doesn't create a big old icicle and burst in the winter or just rust. Everything's solid so it's not movable. So while I have it out, I actually wanna drill an extra hole to go a little bit higher, just in case I want to clear something. My motorhome's kinda of tall with AC and I wanna make sure I can drive under it. Don't. I'm not gonna use that for lifting. It's way easier to drill it now than it is when it's all together. It's almost impossible to do when it's all together, so we'll do it now. That gives me extra six inches of lift. I don't dare go, because the pipe's only there. I wouldn't dare go any further than that, just to even lift its own weight. Now it's safe. Okay, the next step is I need to make this 102 inches wide inside the inside. Right now it's about 94 and a half. We'll just call it 94. I need to add eight inches. So I need to move the beam four inches in on each side, which still puts the end of the beam over the center of the upright. Kill it, you got it? You got it. Move those down four inches, move those in four inches, and that'll put me exactly where I need to use the original bolt holes, and if I ever wanna go back to the original width, I can just move it back over. Yeah, you wanna interrupt me? What's up, baby? What's up? What's up? Ah! The little tip is spring loaded, so it'll set in your center punch. And then I flip on the magnet. There we go. Okay, as far as assembly goes, I think I'm just gonna lay the beam across the top, bolt the beam on first, and then there's legs with wheels on it, and they actually go vertical, just like that. Those are them. Those are the four bolt holes. It goes into those four bolt holes. So I mount the beam first, because the ground will hold it kind of in place, and then I'll just lift it up and do each leg, put on the casters, and then there's little support bars, and then we're gonna use, I think, a ladder. That's what I think I'm going to do. I'm going to take a ladder, put it over that, like an A-frame, and just hoist up the middle up to it. So let's see if that works. What are the chances another one lines up? Ooh, it's close. Okay, we've got two in. Maybe we're on a roll now. Look how much warpage they got from welding. Nice and bowed. I just threw a tape measure and I'm actually 105 inches between there. 105 inches, I was, I was shooting for 102 and a half. So I measured two different Harbor Freights, two assembled one of these and they were 94 and a half inches between the posts. 94 and a half, two different Harbor Freights I measured at. I did not measure this one. Moved each one out four inches, 94 and a half, plus eight is exactly 102 and a half. Somehow I got an extra inch and a half, so I measured with my bolts, everything's four inches. Mine is actually 97 inches wide. So apparently they changed something. So mine is 97 inches wide, 
and me adding 8 inches to the width made me 105. Which would be fine, except for I don't think I can fit it through the gate now. So, I have a, a side gate right here that I was planning on rolling it back through. I don't think I can fit it, so I gotta re-drill holes at the top, because I don't need it wider than 102 inches. There you go, 20, 30 minutes later, we are at 102 inches. So I ended up moving each one over two and a half inches. You can see the I-beam is still, actually the I-beam sticks over about a quarter of an inch over the outside of the beam, which is plenty. I was, I was actually going to, when it was that far over, I was gonna put a little kicker leg down here and maybe one up here, but the way it sits right now, there's no need to. So I'm just gonna leave it as is. And if I ever need to move it wider, I already got the holes drilled. These are like half grease fittings. I decided just to cut off the extra inch and a half off the end because I'll never use it. And I can weld it back on if I need it, but it's going to get in the way. There we go. In my scenario, I don't want a ton of stuff sticking out the side, so like this chain hook I cut off and welded over, so that freed up about an inch. This thing was straight up and down with this protruding. I took away a little over two inches just bending it. Same with this pulley up here. So before to even raise it or lower it, you had to, this stuck out straight out the side, like way out to here. But now it's tucked over the side. And so even if I'm up against a wall, I can get a pair of pliers or something, you know, screwdriver, anything that fits in this little groove. And if I had to, I could raise or lower it from the side. So that freed up, that made the whole thing about almost five inches narrower once I do the other side, just bending that over. So standing it up, what am I gonna do? Um, I do have a tractor that would lift, I think it would lift that high. It's about, what is it, about 103 inches, something like that. But I thought maybe I could just come along it up to this versus going to spend an hour and a half digging out my tractor. Um, but if I can come along it up to the top of that, which is exactly the same height inside as this is, so I might not be able to do that. So I might, if I come along it to the outside, and then just push it up once it gets up there. I think that might be what I do. I don't know, we're ready to stand it up though. Okay, this is what I have. I'm actually not going to lift it from the top beam. I'm actually going to lift it from a chain I have anchored about three, two and a half feet down. That way, because anytime you use like a come along or this one's gonna chain hoist, um, you're going to run out of room at the top. At the very top, I have a bar spread over those and then another piece of metal on each rung to help protect the aluminum rungs. I think two guys could bench press this, but then you're going to quickly run out of it's taller than you height. I guess if you had like, if you bench pressed it and then had buckets to jump up on or something, but we're just going to use the hoist.
Now there's nothing sticking out of the side and protruding, so you can set it right up next to a wall, or if it's even tight in your garage, you could walk right by it without snagging yourself on anything. So now it's time to put the trolley on. I actually bought two trolleys to go up there because I have two chain hoists. I actually bought the two ton version, even though it's only a one ton gantry crane, just because the price is so similar and I bought a one ton. So I bought both. You see the size difference? I don't know, figured why not? See, two got to be better than one. So this is my first chain hoist I picked up. Paid five dollars for this. The guy said he had it up for three months for 30, 40 bucks and nobody wanted it. So five bucks. It weighs a ton. And it only lifts 500 pounds. It's only quarter ton. So it'll work just fine for me. I don't know what the safety margin, this is a Yale something. I'm sure the safety margin is at least double for overhead lifting. So you can lift a thousand pounds, just don't stand under it. So we'll just, everything seems to work fine when I was playing around with it on the ground. Um, don't know how well it's just gonna sit out in the weather forever. There are some grease certs. So I guess we'll just grease it up and maybe I'll Maybe I'll make like a rubber cover, like out of an old inner tube or something, or a piece of plastic kind of just sits over it. But I have to get this up 10 feet in the air and hooked on. So we'll see about using another hoist to get this up here. And then I got another one that weighs twice as much as this does. Then I got this behemoth three ton, which is just humongous and so heavy. I don't know the brand on this. This is a, it's not a Harbor Freight. It is a Duff Norton, little mule, three ton, model BN5. So I got it hooked on the bottom and then the hook's over here. I'll just swing up the hook and hook it through this little eye. There we go. One down. That one has a ton of extra chain, so I'm gonna cut that and splice it, re-weld the link. There you go, just the right length now. So this is the mechanism that actually you crank and it pulls the cable and lifts up the uh, lifts up the arm. Kind of a unique system. It works like a ramp. So this all slides in here. This goes through here. There's a cam. So this plate on the outside oscillates. I don't know if you can see this, but it doesn't actually spin. What it does is it forces these teeth. See how this is much smaller. It forces it onto that ramp and barely grabs that and causes this to turn. And so, and then it forces the next one onto this and causes it to turn, but also it doesn't allow this to unwind itself, which is nice. So it doesn't just let go out of your hand. The problem is, is this, this is just cast. This is just cast. And I don't know how you, if you can see how rough this cast is. So what I did, I already fixed the other side. I just took my Dremel in here with a little burr and I just smoothed out all these outside edges. So, I mean, you got like sandpaper going against sandpaper. I don't know if you can hear that. And then you can see how much black is on here. That's metal wearing off already. So they didn't even have this greased. So where this slides into here and spins wasn't even greased. And the grease in here looked horrible. So we will just take the Dremel, grind that down, and then they work like they should. That's with like five minutes of use. The grease they had in there is so bad. I don't know if you can see, I just smoothed out these edges. I 
just a little bit. I already did the other side. This side was actually working pretty decent. And so now that'll just ramp in there a little bit easier. Let's grease this up and that just slides right back down in there. Okay, I bet you this trailer weighs in at about 800 pounds and 400 pounds for the generator. So let's just lift up the whole trailer. Put the generator on that side since this one's only rated for 500 pounds, but this is rated for three tons. So we should be right about there. Don't say you don't want one. Look at this. Whole trailer is just free to swing. You could flip a trailer up on its side, work on the bottom. You can just grab it by the tongue, stand it straight up in the air, work on the whole bottom. I think I got about 500 pounds on this one, 700 on this one or so. We're about 1,200 pounds altogether. Not even phased. I'm excited. You need one. There we go. All modified for my use to live outdoors for the next 20 years. I actually think the steel's pretty good on this. It welds beautifully. Sometimes you get Chinese stuff and you weld on it and it's just crap. I actually like having two um, hoists, one on each side. I think that's gonna make a difference, you know, cause you're always lifting stuff off the side or trying to balance something, you know, trying to lift like a truck cab or the bed of a truck or something off. Um, obviously in the center, you know, you lift engines and stuff out. Something I've been using my engine hoist forever, but I thought maybe I'll upgrade to this. I was gonna build my own, but the price of steel, I can buy this, I think I paid like 700 bucks or something for this. I can buy this cheaper than I can just the raw steel for it. I still gotta do all the work after I buy the steel. But we'll try it out. Maybe you'll see it in some future videos. All right, Ginger, wanna play with the hose? You ready? I don't know if the grass gets more water or you do. Hey, drop it. There you go. 